Hey guys, Double Dave 22 here, back for part three of my Heads Up series. Hopefully you guys are getting a lot out of this. It's It was a fun match, and I think that this with this guy's style, it's good to like really start to understand how to make very exploitative adjustments that I, I don't think I was making enough of. And I want to be able to adjust on the fly a little bit better. So that's the main reason for making this video and trying to learn from some of my mistakes here. So... As the match progressed, I realized he was calling down very little, and when he was betting, he was just betting and raising kind of any time he picked up any pair ever. So those are the main two things I want to start making adjustments around. And considering he's he's very like calling down very rarely, I want to start bluffing and semi bluffing a lot with my draws here. So I'm gonna be raising here almost every time against this particular guy, especially when he just donks half pot we hadn't seen him do that before i think he's got a lot of deuce x and 4x so seems pretty reasonable i'm gonna be raising a lot i should be raising more often when he limps because his limp range is just super weak and you could do either you could check call you could bet but like i hadn't had a ton of success checking to him with marginal showdown value because he just seemed to be putting a lot of pressure on so I think I like betting better, and he does just fold when he misses, which is pretty easy to play against in general. Um, here he's donking again, but I don't have to raise because I shouldn't have value. And I could bet turn for like some value, but um, you know I don't know how he's going to react with a flush draw. I don't know. I think I'd break even against queen x and 7x, probably losing. Uh, and he doesn't have 2x that often, so in general... Yeah, I think check is probably good, and then just see what happens on rivers. Uh, this jack doesn't really connect with his range too much. Uh, if it was a hard, I could see folding. Um, I don't even think a king or ace. Like, like what does a jack do? He doesn't have a lot of, like, if it was queen 8x and the, the river was a jack, then yes, it would be a fold. But queen 7x, I think I just have to call on the jack. Um, and he seems just betting way too often so if he's over bluffing this is for sure a call and he did have hearts and this just kind of shows that i was in the right realm right read um knowing that i would fold on a heart and it's a little results oriented but i still think it's a good thought process in that hand i do iso the king 10 well, iso heads up is not hard to do but anyway um pretty bad flop for us i do have king high some showdown value I could bet there's a tiny bit of value because he plays a little bit passively sometimes, but it's hard to really get to show down with this hand, so I think I'm just going to check give up. Yep. Uh, and when he leads, I do have the queen of clubs here. I've got a gut shot and back to a flush. I probably shouldn't be folding this, but a full pot lead has been, I think, stronger for him than his half pot or three quarters. So I think it's fine to just get away from this. I'm going to have plenty of better hands to continue, so it's not a massive deal to, to fold there. This is probably not a good defend against him personally, but I just felt like he was playing so poorly that I could get away with it. Um, so we do call and pick up no equity and fold. And it's like I, I was happy that a pot was bigger than, you know, two big blinds uh, or four big blinds that I could hopefully take advantage of him post-flop and have him make a mistake on certain textures when the money's bigger. So, I mean, that, that probably tells me I should be three-betting more in general against him, which I had been doing a little bit more of. As you saw, I started including more suited connectors in my three-bet. Uh, here again, just trying to get the showdown. And it's weird that he doesn't bet at all with the queen-10. So, like, he, he randomly plays very passively. Uh, the river bet check is fine, but like I don't get why he's not betting this turn. So it's just something to, to keep an eye out for. Uh, and I made an adjustment again to not call down as wide. Or not put myself in spots that I would normally call players. Like just against a normal c bet, king high is going to be good here most of the time. But against this guy who wasn't slowing down when he started potting it, I think it's a good adjustment to make is just to not not uh not call the initial one light just so that my continuing range is stronger and i can defend more against his turn bets probably okay to just see bet this i it's zero equity but like i have some backdoor straight draws that i can 
put some money in on and I did end up betting this one and usually I wait till river but when I can when he checks twice and I can actually improve to the best hand I think it's fine to be betting the turn I can start to include this in three bet ranges I didn't include offsuit connecting type hands I just generally had them in call in my call ranges but this is an adjustment I can start making and just be more aggressive against him in general and this, these are the types of hands I can start doing it with I uh, generally have to call middle pair here with a gut shot and backdoor diamonds he did continue to pot it and I'm not sure what I did here I want to keep calling I think I beat a lot of jack queen king queen king jack Occasionally just worse pairs that he bets for no reason, which he seems to be doing. I block some 7-8. I block, um, I mean, having the 7 of diamonds doesn't do anything for me anymore. But that's like a few potential fewer flushes if the river comes in a diamond. Um, so I, I think it's okay to just call again and see what happens. I obviously have to fold on any card above a 10. But maybe just potentially call down uh, if... The board breaks out. So doing up folding. I'm not sure if that was a good fold or not at this point. Just seeing how he's played. But I will have some better hands there if we look at it real quick. I will have all sorts of 10x. I'll have not too many two pairs really. I mean I'll have 10-4. I don't know if I defend 10-4 off so that's one of my better hands. I, I think I would make an adjustment to Check call. I hand like 7-8 against him here. Um, yeah. I think that, that kind of about settles it. I mean, I have I just have some better hands that I can continue with, and I'll have better 9x. I think that makes a big deal here, because he probably does bet twice with like ace-9. So I think I need slightly better there to continue, but it wouldn't have been the worst call in the world either. Here is kind of a semi-bluff spot i mean he's we're getting a little bit of value from like 5x and deuce x and worse threes and then we do have the the spades that can peel off which would get us a lot of value so i generally yeah i think i start by betting so it's fine you could always check this texture as well just knowing that you can continue on all spade turns but i think it just depends on how often you think they're gonna go after you on this board and he doesn't seem to be check raising very often Seems fine to start by betting. Should probably be value raising my suited kings against him. We do just get into check call mode and it's a bad river. But we're good. Another low pocket pair where we don't put in any money. There's gotta be a better way to play these pocket pairs against him. I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing some small C bets. Um, but it's different. I'd rather have bottom pair with five outs than fourth pair with two outs so generally gonna just play them a little more passively so here's a spot where I'm like planning on a lot of barrels you know I've got backdoor hearts I um, I don't get in the way of any of his like 70 or sorry 8 9 9 10 type hands um, and if any of those cards peel off I probably need to slow down um, so I am planning on putting in a lot of bets but not when the board kind of puts a 8 through, I want to say 10. Those are going to be my worst barrels, I think. Um, other than that, I think I need to be putting in a lot of bets, and a king is a fair card to do that on. And we're just trying to pick off bluffs here, but it doesn't want to stab. Uh, it looks like I started 3xing, which is um, an adjustment I had been deciding on finally. We're, we're a little bit deeper, and he seemed to be calling a lot. I'm just trying to get the showdown with my 610. I don't know if I'm really getting called by worse here. You know, I blocked the 6, and um, he could easily have Jack X still, and Queen X. 10X, we're, we're chopping with a lot of it. So I didn't see too much value. Maybe A I calls, but probably not. I could 3-bet this for value. Call is okay too. I think check call is better in this particular spot against him. I have some showdown value and I want him to continue potting it when we hit. So I think call is good and we do hit. 
and he half pots it and we saw this before and it was strong it was top two so i think i want to lean towards check raising when he makes it smaller like this and his range is stronger when he pots it on the turn i call but when he does this i think i have to check raise and i do and he does call and it's probably a bad river for his range considering he's going to have a lot of queen x and 10 x so any over cards is going to scare him he'll have some uh, some jack nine, it didn't change anything though. Some, you can't really have ace jack unless it's like ace jack, jack of, I guess ace jack has a double gutter. So he could very easily have that given the way things have rolled out. Yeah. So he could have ace jack and he could have king jack and queen king 10. So a lot of value hands and he could have a worse flush. I mean, I, I definitely want to go bigger here is kind of what I'm driving at. Um, yeah. So 142 seems good. Three quarter pot. I don't think I can go too much bigger, but I am targeting a lot of his two pairs. Maybe I want to go a little smaller just because he's he's not really calling down as often, but he did call the King X when the Ace rivered, um, King 5, I think it was. So he's capable of calling here without the nuts, um, or relative nuts, because I have him. So I think the big bet is fine, but maybe a little smaller just to target some of his weaker two pairs and his... Uh, his straights and stuff stuff that might be worried about a flush. And uh, I haven't really shown him any big bluffs, so I think he kind of just believes me at this point, which is why I want to continue putting a lot of pressure on. So I end up betting my good 10 here, which I think is nice and standard. And it's a good spot to just pick off river bluffs. You know, I'll have plenty of queen nine, king queen, and worse tens, and apparently king two. So that ended up working out. I think we've got him a little bit tilted. I ISO the ace 10 and I'm, this is mostly protection. There's some value and a lot of it is just kind of like, let's win the pot type bet here. And, and it's just really hard for me to continue as a check call. So I think I have to start by betting. I'm gonna have some good turn cards to, to be putting another bet in on and that was not one of them. I think I should start by betting with the 6-5 here, plenty of backdoors. And the king, like, if you actually ran this on Flopzilla against his full defend range, I think um, the C bet's probably getting through a little more often than the turn bet, but it does end up working. Again, small pair, no equity, not gonna do anything about it. I am gonna check raise my flush draws that don't have showdown value against this guy. I do check back my weak ace here. I think it's going to be pretty good and standard. Maybe against this guy who's calling a little too much with his 4x and 6x, it's fine. But I'm not getting three streets. Probably not even two against this guy. So let's try to let him stab or something. Probably want to go a little smaller. Um, just because we're already betting thin and he doesn't call down very often. So I think I need to size down my value bets a little bit. And like exploitively size up my bluffs. Uh, nothing special there. This is kind of a very low equity C bet. I don't have much of a plan. I, I don't think I love this. I think this connects a lot with any two, any two connecting cards. You know, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. All those have gut shots or something. Um, not that that's his range exactly, but it's just the four is close enough to the eight. The eight's close enough to the queen. That there's just so many hands that connect on this texture. So if I had a diamond, I'd like it better, but without a diamond, I don't think that's a great C bet. I think I can take some free equity here, or I can try to barrel, and if he hasn't been calling down, maybe it's good to just keep barreling against this guy, but that's bad river and we fold. Uh, nothing special. I should probably be three betting this for value against him. I'm not sure why I didn't, um, but it's okay to mix in some calls with your Broadway Ace X just to have the occasional better Ace X in your flatting range. That said, I think it's it's against his strategy. It's a better um, three bet, and he doesn't even put in a single bet with King Queen here, so I feel kind of owned. Um, I should probably start betting at some point, and if he's not betting this turn, I don't think he's betting this river, so I need to just put in a bet. That was. A little bit too much of a slow play against him. 
and here's a different bottom pair situation where I don't think my uh, I don't think I'm gonna have a ton of good turn barrels when he continues on this texture so I'm just gonna try to get the show down uh, mostly protection y value we bet there with the 8.5 on the turn it's my standard dry board C bet sizing same type of thing and he does check raise which I don't know why he does that uh, and he min three bets here so we're gonna book it in with the seven five I think we have to call one with the gut shot and backdoor hearts and he half pots it and I think there's some reverse implied odds with our seven of hearts and our pairs the two doesn't really change much considering you know it's not like we're gonna have two pair and lose to like an over pair um, we're already losing to over pairs basically you know, if I had something like 8-4, it would be obviously a bad turn card. Anyway, I think this is, uh, you know, it, it's just a little too weak for me to continue, even to a half pot sizing. I can't really wrap a 2 either, or a flush seems a little thin. Uh, and it's starting to get, like, very marginal in terms of sizing. I wouldn't want to, like, raise and then fold for, like, 100 more. I do bet my good jack, and I just... Going for three streets here. Sizing on River, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm targeting his weaker Jack X. So maybe I want to go bigger if I'm targeting that. If I want to include all of his 7X and his like 8s and 9s and 10s, then I probably want to go a little smaller. So this probably doesn't accomplish what I want it to accomplish. This probably gets folds from some 7X and then only has him continuing with Jack X, which he would call a bigger bet for. So hopefully that makes sense. You want, you got to figure out what parts of the range you're targeting. If you want to include everything, make it smaller, and then you get those calls. But if you want to get the max from what you think is a decent chunk of their range, but it's a strong part of their range, then you got to go bigger. So I don't like that bet so much. And I do just kind of try to get the showdown with King five high and we use the king 10 high this is my standard you know i saw his limp and we're just going to check all the swap i could bet i don't think there's anything terribly wrong with betting either considering we're, we're not doing super well when we start check calling against this guy he doesn't seem to like slow down and i feel like i'm guessing a lot so i think i should start my lines more by betting in these thin marginal showdown value situations it gets him into like a mode of like passivity when I start betting when he starts betting he just kind of goes at it and I never know where I'm sitting necessarily uh, yeah standard uh, he just leaves when we have top set here and I don't think I should do anything other than call I'm guessing he's got a lot of just 5x and he's probably giving up here so um, considering we block all the kings I think this would be a good spot to just check but the times that he does have, you know, the last king in the deck, maybe he just keeps betting it. So maybe he's got no king X in his turn check range, which means I should just check and try to let him get two pair or let him stab rivers. I think so. This is kind of a mistake. And, and if I bet, I mean, this is a little bit smaller, but I should probably go even smaller than this. But I don't even think I should be betting that turn. I think I was a little greedy. Um, yeah, I mean, these are hands I could include in three bets, but they play fine as flats as well. I could stab turn with the queen of diamonds here and continue on, you know, bluff on river diamond. Um, I think he's got a, a decent amount of 10x when he calls the turn, so I can bet twice. I think he bets all ace x on the flop, probably bets his king x on the flop too, so I think it's probably just a two barrel. Uh, this is just going to be a raise for me with backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. It does call. We pick up a good turn card, and it's kind of awkward because this technically helps him a good part of his range, but it just improves my hand so much that I want to bet. But like getting check raise is kind of a disaster, so it's like I'm stuck in a difficult, difficult spot here. I think a good standard play would be a check, but I did end up betting. I think. Um, 
just because I don't have any showdown value, but I have a lot of equity. So he hasn't like done anything like a big check shove or anything. So I, I'm I'm not overly concerned about Beth holding away my equity against this particular guy. Against more aggressive players or more spazzy players, it seems like a better spot to check. But I think against this particular guy, it's probably best to just put in three. He does just fold. I end up check calling this one just because I've got two clean overs basically and I've got the hearts that I can continue on. So um, I could bet turn for like protection purposes some value, but I'm just taking it to showdown and we're good. Bet my open ender on the turn. When he checks back flops, he doesn't seem to be very balanced, so I can kind of over bluff. Um, when he checks back turns as the preflop raiser. Uh, okay, so this seems like a standard C bet. I can try to bet to get his 8x to fold, but again, the 2 is going to be a little bit less in his range. So if it was like king 8 3, king 8 4, I think he's got more 4x in those situations and more gut shots that just fold. Now it's like I have zero equity. I think I still go for it, but um, I'm, I'm, I was just trying to show him a bluff and. <laughs> he finally does check raise, which I imagine is something like King Queen here. Um, I was trying to show him a bluff because I just wasn't getting paid off on any of my value spots, so I started picking even like less equity spots. Um, Ace of Spades here is kind of the big reason I'm calling, and he does just continue to pot it. And I mean, this seems like something maybe I should just be check raising, um, just so I can win the pot. If I'm not like willing to call down against him and. He seems to be doing this too much, then this flop call might be losing money. So I think I can play my showdown value, some of my bluffs a little more aggressively um, against this particular guy rather than try to call down because it's like he just puts max pressure on in a lot of these spots that I can't call down where certain guys would just see bet and give up. We're just not seeing that often enough from him. Um, we can just look at his turn. I mean, his turn C bet at 88%, which is massive. So he's just not slowing down ever. And he's even betting a lot of rivers too. So it makes it really hard to call down any spots. And I need to be very selective when I do. Um, so check off flop, backdoor, hearts, and a five is great because we get a ton of value from an ace. Could start by leading this turn. I don't think I can check raise or anything, and check call seems bad, so I think this is a pretty reasonable turn to just start leading on. Maybe he calls with an ace and then folds river, so I probably have to put in two rattles there. Okay, I mean, here was an interesting hand. I, It's very, very, very similar to the one of the first hands we saw, where I could just start leading here. But again, he's the type that C bets his 5x on the flop. So it's really not the best adjustment against him. So this is a spot where I do want to check and <clears throat> allow him to, to keep betting all of his draws and his worst 5x. Like, let's get max from that. I probably get max if I start leading anyway. But um, maybe check raise is better here. Maybe just check call and let him blast. I think I finally had a hand to like call his, his massive pot bets on. So I was like happy to let him continue potting it. Um, and I thought that was a good river because he's going to have a lot of flushes. And we'll have some queen x even though I block it. And I'll still have over pairs and I didn't think he was going to check those. But um, this is a spot where I could think about leading. Because he had been checking scary rivers a lot of the time. So I'm kind of stuck between all right, let's let him continue his massive potting frenzy which we haven't really seen past the turn, so I don't know how he reacts on rivers. Um, or I can like get into his like stationy nature and just bet this river. And assume he's not going to fold a 9 very often. He's not going to fold a 5. He's not going to fold over pairs. And if he's got a flush, we're getting a ton of money from that anyway. He might just jam. So um, I think check shove is obviously the way to get all of the money in against his flushes and against his 5x betting we get a call from a lot of those so as a standard check shove seems better but against this guy maybe i can make an adjustment and lead uh, and he does check back aces so the only two times we've really gotten to showdown against his potting frenzies he's had it so 
it makes me very, very hesitant to, to be calling down light against him. I don't expect him to get him off of an 8 here, so I don't want to just start barreling. Uh, so we call with bottom pair to a min bet, and then he pots it. Um, again, I'm just kind of staying away from his pot bets. When I don't have a lot of showdown value. He is potting again. Clearly, we call. This hand does get interesting. He he pots the flop and then checks the turn. This is, just has to be a bet. I don't know why I'm checking. Um, I think I assume he's going to be betting all his flush draws in the turn, but I don't even think he does. So I'm just kind of giving a free card to flush draws a lot and like King Jack and stuff. But he, I, I just felt like he was going to fold a lot. He seemed to be like folding when I was putting in pressure. So I wanted to let him like put in more bets. Um, as you've seen, he's just like kind of gone crazy in a lot of spots where I haven't been able to call down. So I wanted to have some calling hands here. And maybe I can save my more marginally uh, like ace 10 type hands um, to check back and call. Um, I'm going to have plenty of options to do that. Plenty of ace x to just check back and call. So this may be one and just go for three streets. I think that's probably the, the most sound strategy. But I did end up checking back, and the river doesn't scare me in any way. I think it gives him some two pairs with ace three. So I wanted to just jam and get the max from that. And I don't think he's got ace queen. I think he's got plenty of like, uh, he might even have a hand like five three, like five three of diamonds or queen three. Uh, you never know with this guy. So I think I, I think shove is standard. He doesn't have sets like ever here, and he doesn't have ace queen. So I'm basically free rolling, and I don't think he's got a straight really ever either so seems good to me and he goes fold um, and I probably only have time for a few more hands and uh, he ends up clawing back um, with three hands I'm just gonna jump ahead to see them um, he ends up clawing back and I I wanted to finish him off and this is during like an eight tabling MTT session so this is like Causing me a little bit of issues, um, so <laughs> I don't even know I should be playing this spot against him. I what happened? Yeah, I mean it, it's obviously a fine flat. I could start by check raising, but like check raise folding kind of sucks. And if he's not slowing down, like this kind of sucks in general. I'm not hitting often enough, and you know I might not even be good. It, it feels weird to just check fold, but when he's got not a full stack, I think it's probably okay. Should probably be check raising this turn. Um, I have no idea why he's min betting, but I have no showdown value. So I mean, I'm getting a great price, which is why I call. And uh, but I don't I don't know what the heck he's doing to be honest. All right, so limp the pot. He just starts potting it, but he checks. Looks like I call here. I don't know if I like this call so much, but. You know, he should be betting all of his, like, jack-queen, ace-queen, ace-jack on the turn. Um, he could have, he most likely has a hand like jack-10. Um, or jack-7, jack-5. Anything with, like, jack and two pair makes a lot of sense. And uh, not much else. I mean, I guess, I guess he could have a hand like just random jack-x, jack-8. Um... Let's just see. Yeah, I had to call. I don't know how much I like this. It's kind of blind, uh, but he was bluffing a fair amount in these spots as we saw before. So, um, 10, 8. Oh, I felt pretty owned in this spot. <laughs> um, that's funny. So he pots flop, checks turn, and then I guess assumes his hand is good, which seems a little thin, but he got the call. So that was one of like the better hands he played. <laughs> um, let's check out this one. Yeah, he occasionally check raised me on these textures, but I think he got through often enough that I I could get away with it. Uh, I do end up three betting the queen ten, which I think is fine. My check calls haven't been doing super lovely, so I think I start by betting, and he puts in a very large raise, which we haven't seen a ton of. I don't I don't know. He seems kind of passive in that he would call with a lot of his draws, so I think this is probably just a fold. And we've got 
with a ton of hearts too, so um, it's like a few less flush draws is sticking in. Not that like that matters a ton, but I don't know. So let's see if there's any more quick hands we can go through before I finish off the series. We, he kind of just um, fizzles off and leaves when we break sort of even. Um, I did barrel my gut shot here. And this, the 8 is okay. I mean, he's going to have a lot of 7, 8, 5, 6, 6, 8 type hands that are definitely continuing. So I think I have to put in 3 if I'm going to bet. The 8 seems like a terrible river card. I guess I bet. Wow. Um, this is definitely a guess. I think he's got a little too much 8x for me to be truly happy about this. Um, because he's got all 8, 9, and 6, 8, and 7, 8, and 5, 8. Yeah, I have all those too, but I'm going to check back a lot of those at some point. So I don't like this, but it does work. And he wasn't really capable of calling down, so if he didn't have it. He's not calling me with a 7, so I think I do get folds like a decent amount. So against this guy, it's like not horrible. Um, so I ISO, and then I see that with a gut shot, and he min raises. I probably can call. I might have the direct odds to call. Uh, I think he raises with the, like, just a bear six, a bear four, a bear five a lot of the time, but uh, I think at the end, of, oh, I do call. And then I just give up. Yep. Uh, a few more losses here. I don't see how I can fold an ace to this guy. Seems like a bad river. I lose to every ace axe combination. I beat some flush draws and I beat some missed, like, Got shots in like seven, nine, nine, ten, stuff like that, and he might bluff the eight a fair amount, but he's the type that just keeps betting when he has a pair. So, um, as you saw, he bet the nine, ten on the the queen nine x, um, and he bet the turn when he picked up a gut shot. So he could very easily have something like eight, seven here. It's not inconceivable. Uh, just he seems to be crushing me at the moment. Here's potentially a spot to to use the bottom pair aggression. You know, a ten is clean for the most part. Ten of hearts is not my favorite. Again, the drier the board, the better probably. But uh, there's some value. There's a lot of protection, and there's good barrel opportunities. So it seems like a good spot to start betting. Obviously, I have to call the 10. He just has a straight, of course. Uh, I think when we go a few more hands, I think this is, a, this is a strategy where I would just generally bluff rivers, so I don't really like my turn bet. Um, and I usually just bet this flop. I think I just missed it. Um, so as you can see, I'm not playing very well anymore. Uh, what happened on the flop? Looks like I see bet middle pair where in a spot where I normally check, but it's not a huge deal. We do get value from Ace Eight High, so I mean, as you can see, this is a profitable C bet if that's calling me. And we do three bet. Oh, we, it looks like we got a new opponent. Um, okay, so that looks like it was the end, and I think that's where I'm going to end it. Um, I will show you the final hand against the new guy, and this is the way that these guys have been playing normally and how I normally have to play. Um, so we get a three bet, a four bet reasonably big because these guys just have to call and he does call. We flop top pair, see bet relatively small, he check calls and then puts in half his stack on the turn six so we put in the rest of his stack and he calls with ace five. So this is how I normally have to play. And then it was very rare to play a guy who I could actually bluff and had a fold button um, and who wasn't just giving it away, so I didn't have to play super low variance. I, I, I think, uh, you know, it was funny that I just tried to get this other guy's stack for so long and then he leaves, a new guy enters with the same stack and just gives it away in like 20 hands. Um, so anyway, that was uh, my little lesson on heads up and I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I know it fell apart a little bit at the end, but if you guys have any questions or comments, please post them in the forums. I'll be around to answer them, and uh, I hope this was helpful. So, see you guys next time.